Hey everybody. He's Shane. I'm Lex. Yeah. Welcome to it. How's it going? How did you guys like the new intro? It was I'm gonna JJ worked on that one. But uh, yeah. JJ, JJ worked. JJ worked. Right. And Annie, I don't think that those are those shirts are necessarily vintage shirts as much as they're rancid. Rancid shirts. Rancid and vintage, yeah. Something like that. Let's just get the wording down right. It's it's political. <laughs> it's political, yeah. yeah but today we're gonna talk about yes. Chrome, Firefox, we've had these requests for a while. There's some workarounds that we've offered, but we finally just buckled down, and by we, I mean Chris. Yeah. And said, let's go ahead and <laughs> figure out a way to uninstall Chrome and Firefox. Yeah, those darn users that click on the, you know, yeah, this is add a, windows, like, let's load this, we help you take care of those guys. This is so. the uh, uninstalling per user installation. So mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got the other ones down, you know, the uninstalling. It's just a per user, and we're actually gonna have Chris come in a little bit, um, a little later and explain kind of the difference before. It's more of an uninstall for Firefox and a rip out for Chrome. That's a good way to put it, yeah. Um, I mean, he'll, he'll, I'll let him go into it a little bit on that one. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna jump into. You but know, we are also go ahead. looking for uh, someone to help us build packages. So uh, I guess with that, we've got a little hiring video. JJ, you want to play that so, one? Yeah, yeah we're sure. looking for someone to hire. Hire. No, not looking to for someone to just help. Just <laughs> hire, yep. okay. And this is a uh, relocation position. You're no, no remote. No remote. So, yeah. Yeah. You got to come to Salt Lake. It's cool here. It is. But there's a relocation package that we offer. So. Yeah. So. All right. Are we gonna hit it? Yeah. Or we're just yeah. gonna stand here. No, we're gonna stand. How would you like to join our elite team of developers, testers, marketers, managers, technical support people, system administrator menfolk, and system administrator womenfolk too? The list goes on. We're a small company in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains in Salt Lake City, Utah. A diverse town, a town with diverse weather, and really cool things to do like watch all of our local sports teams lose on a regular basis. Some of the benefits of working here include free lunches every day at lunchtime, a break room with many nummy snacks and drinks, it's like a f***ing 7-Eleven in here, your very own office, free public transportation and train pass, full medical coverage, and paid vacation time. Looks like that trip to Branson's finally gonna happen. Our products are used by over 100,000 computer administrators all over the world. And to support our products, we need the best talent that strawberry Pop-Tarts and Coke Zero cans with your name on them can buy. See what jobs are available and fill out an application today by visiting adminarsenal.com forward slash jobs. All right, welcome back. Yeah, once again, there's a relocation package that we're offering. Yeah, shameless ploy for working for us, so. Yeah, well, it's a shameless plug. Plug, we're looking to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> the post. I'm not trying to get you to come see our movie. We're trying to <laughs> come and get work for it. There you go. Mm. But yeah, the good thing is, you know, show on the road. with all the people out there who use this, we ought to be able to find some really yeah. great package builders. So. Yeah. Um, and, we, and, you know, just we, we had Jason. Uh, yeah. Jason's our, one of our main support guys, and he, he came in from Florida and yeah. relocated his family to Utah. Anyway, <laughs> let's, uh, let's jump on this. So, once again, here's a concern. You've, uh, you've, you've got Firefox and or Chrome that you grab the packages from PDQ Deploy, the repository or the package library, you install those out, all is hunky-dory. However, um, you probably still have users that may maybe you're settled on Firefox or maybe you're, you're settled on IE and yet they go and they find a link to install Google Chrome and they don't have administrator rights so it installs in Google Chrome in their users User context, directory, yeah. et cetera. So, uh, so we'll, oh, that's a 32-bit, Never mind. I was looking down at an error that I had trying to deploy something. So yeah, what we're gonna do is talk about how you can deal with those. So we've got a couple of computers here. I'm gonna minimize this. So we're talking Firefox, Mozilla Firefox. So I built a couple so of VMs do Firefox last night. first? Let's do Firefox first. Okay. We got Firebomb <laughs> and Mobomb. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I was uh, stretching for names. All right, I'm just gonna actually do a, I'm gonna create a quick static collection. Okay. Just, just so that these are the computers that we're working with now. And you said you've got a Firebomb? Firebomb, yep. Mobomb for Mozilla. And then Chrome, I thought of things that were Chrome, so we got Harley and Hoopty, so. Harley and H-O-O? -O. Yeah. There we go, okay, so these, I'm just making a collection just so that I don't have to keep, keep on Keep it filtering. easy for us, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. There's a working collection. These are the work computers that we're working with right now. All right. Um, let's so I got a question please. since we're doing inventory, right? So if the user is logged on or not logged on mm -hmm. and they've installed a user version of 
Firefox or Chrome, will it show up in inventory? If they are not logged on, and, and we're talking about the user version, no, mm -hmm. it won't. It will, that user, that, well, let's look at this. Uh, you said Harley, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Harley's a computer. We're looking in the applications. We don't see anything there. Now let's actually log in. So at the time of the scan, if the user's not logged in, we're not going to see that there's a user yeah. version of that on there. Correct. Okay. That, that's why people have asked, hey, how come it seems to come and go? It depends on who's logged on. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you mouth the password so people could guess what it was? Probably. Can they see through the beard? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're logged in now. Yep. As Dutch, so. All right, so now, now it's, we're, 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 we're logged in. Let's just go ahead and hit scan again. Um, on, on Harley. Mm -hmm. Now that we're logged in, notice before we didn't have, we didn't show, um, yeah, sorry, buddy. Yeah, so it wasn't showing that the Chrome was on there, and obviously you can see the Chrome icon on there. And it's scanning, it's almost going to be wrapped up. And then we'll see the Chrome gets shown up, or we should see that Chrome gets put, placed in here. Yeah. Yep, there oh, it is. There it is. And we did add this a while ago, a couple versions of, of inventory ago. You can highlight an application and see, you know, where we d determine that's installed, and mm -hmm. basically what registry key, registry value are you looking at? And to do that, you just click over here, show me the registry hive and path, either or. Oops, pardon me. So now we can come over and say, yeah, Google Chrome. Oh, it's from the H key users mm -hmm. registry. And um, you can even find the path there. That's how, that's how we determine. Yeah. But once again, if someone logs off, if, if a Dutch logs off a Harley, not, not show anymore. So let's go ahead and do this. Ready to do, well, that was, that was a Chrome, huh? We yeah. to, hell, we're just going to jump into Chrome instead of Firefox. Okay. okay. It's right here. In the package library, um, let me just close this and reopen it. I just put, put these out moments ago. So if you want to follow along, feel free. The note's time to turn the page. When you hear the, yeah, okay. Ding. I have kids, yeah, I have kids, so. You know. Turn the page. You know, it's time to turn the page when the chime bells like this. I think this is going to turn into a Bob Seger song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, go out to your package library. And um, uninstall, you, you'll find an uninstall uh, Chrome and Firefox per user. Okay, are there any warnings with this? I mean, is this use at your own risk kind of stuff? Yes, it is. In fact, it's it's written on the uh, notes. <laughs> I'm gonna point that out, guys. <laughs> yeah. Now it works. Yeah. So here, I, here's the uninstall Google Chrome. I'm gonna import that. Mm -hmm. And then there's uninstall Firefox per user. These are the per user mm -hmm. ones. Okay. <clears throat> and we, yeah, we could make a comprehensive uninstall per user and uninstall the main. But the we, what we've seen the main use case for these are people saying, I want the the the, the enterprise Chrome. Not the per user, so generally they just want to uninstall one or the other one. Yeah. But anyway. All right, so now we've got the uh, uninstall Google Chrome per user package, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and deploy this out. What do you say? I'll look at it first. No. Oh. No, we're going to have Chris actually. Oh, we're going to have Chris explain that one? Yeah. So, just as so you usual, guys, most, oh. of, most of our uninstall, the vast majority of our uninstall packages are for the enterprise level. That's just kind of how it's always been. And I will definitely say this, this is done very Lex style, so it's no holds barred, you know, UFC removal. Wait, uh, you're talking about the uh, Chrome? Yes, the Chrome, yes. yes. So just be aware. Yeah, once again, There's the Chrome is more of a rip as opposed to a pleasant uninstall. Yeah, very true. All right, so we're talking about Harley. Yep. Right. And uh, we'll just do Hope that one here. Just one at we'll just do one at a time. All right. Now. All right, so we're going to deploy this. Uh, I should have opened it up. We do um, have... I did, I, put a, I did put a stop in there, by the way, to, to kill Chrome oh. running, just so you know. Awesome. Yeah, rock on. <laughs> we work well together. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> That's the It'll be great, story. Chris, over here. I didn't know it was doing that. <laughs> now, I like how Chris, I like how Chris has, has done this. I'm going to open this up. Um, in the step two, right, this is where it's doing the uh, uninstall user. This is a PowerShell script. Uh, there's the output log. We're going to open it up. And you'll see, you want to zoom in on that, JJ? And I'm going to have Chris walk through this a little bit more later, but I just wanted to show you. Yeah, we can see that on this computer, the user Dutch, that's the Dutch right there, we found it and ripped it out. And then, a little smaller, JJ? Yeah, head left. No, 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 pull this side uh, that way. Your other left. No, that's cool. <laughs> Here. There we go. 
And right there. Move it in from the left. <laughs> Okay. All right, so you get to see what's actually. Being and you run can see, yeah, there. there's some other profiles here. Elsewhere Engine, uh, Quince, Quintana, Vincent. Those did not have it installed. So this just what he, what Chris is doing is just traversing the uh, user, the user directories, the user profiles, and in, in the registry, the mm -hmm. HKey users key, <coughs> looking for Chrome, and then brutally murdering it. Yes. If it's found. So now, now, so just some heads up. <coughs> This kind of a leftover. Yes, you can see the desktop was was deleted. Uh, it is. It's really hit and miss when it comes to these taskbars. Yep. It always has been. Sometimes they'll go. Sometimes they won't. If he logs off, logs on, it might show up. But they might have to run it and see that it's no longer available. Now and the other thing you can do is nest a package because you know you can remove it if you want to put it back. You're talking about. You're talking about. I want to install Chrome. Right. Yeah. So you, you pull the user version off and right behind it stick the. The enterprise version on there, and then you're in control. Hopefully, your end users really don't notice much of a difference. Yeah, so wait, I'll just do this really quick. What he's talking about is uh, Google Chrome. Mm -hmm. We'll just do enterprise, import that. All right, so we have uh, Hoopty. Hoopty, yeah. Hoopty still has it. So let's try that. You want right, to go? Let's, do let's it. go. Mm -hmm. Go all the way. Tear it out, put one back. Remember that Sly Fox song from the 80s? Let's go all the way. Looking for a better way. Remember that? Vaguely. Anyway, well, JJ's too young. JJ? Annie, Annie wasn't even Annie born. Annie wasn't even born. That. Oh, hey, Kelly's you know, over there really rocking. I've listened to music. Let's ask, Char let's ask Charlie. I think he joined ARP at the, in the 80s. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. That was harsh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, once again, work here and get ripped on mercilessly. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Right. yeah. We'll, find right. <laughs> we'll find your Just weak spots in there. We'll find your weak spots and pick on it until you get strong. Is that it? All right, so let's, let's go. I'm going to go out to... Um, I'm going to just quickly go out to Hoopty, right? Yep. All right. So Hoopty and a remote. Don't log in as us. You can't guess the password. Oh, <laughs> you got to type more letters if I'm going to say it like that. So. <laughs> guess who's changing the password for Dutch today? <laughs> Dutch, I think, is getting destroyed at the end of the webcast, there you to be go. honest with you. So. Yeah, Dutch is the special. It's a special, it's a three character password. Ten points to anybody who can guess where I got Dutch from. Ten points. Anybody? Actually, I'll buy you a bottle, I don't, of, I'll buy you a bottle of whiskey if you can. Wow. Really? Yeah. Everyone's Google food. That's, that's a heck of a throw down there. We'll see. All right, so you guys can see Google's here. Yep, so we got Google once again. Um, and, then, and, then, and then while we're doing this, we're going to scan. Thank you for getting me back on track there, Lex. We're going to scan Hoopty because log, there's someone logged yep, on. We're going to see you. We're going to see this. So our goal here is what Lex is saying, hey, if you want to make this into one step, and that is removing the per user and installing the enterprise, at that point, why not use a nested package? Or we don't even have to do that. We'll do, we'll, we'll do the new feature where you can multi-select. There we go. That yeah. sound good? So again, and this, you know, if your end users are not really aware of what's going on, mm -hmm. which most end users aren't. So here we are. It could yeah. be just very invisible to them. So. We have Google Chrome running, yep. all right? And just to... Uh, well, this part wouldn't be invisible to them. Let's say they're running Chrome. That's so why you do it in the middle of the day. Remind them, remind them, remind them that you are the sysadmin. <laughs> it's not a reminder. Can, it's a blunt force trauma. You can jack with their day anytime you want. All right, so we're going to do this. I'm going to say we want to install, we want to run the um, uninstall Google Chrome. So click that one first. And then I'm going to click this enterprise one. And start a deployment with these packages. Notice it went off the, the selection of the clicks, so uninstall Google Chrome is first, and Google Chrome Enterprises, yada, yada, yada. So yada, we will yada. do uh, Hoopty, right? Did I spell that right? I think you did. All right. Deploy. Boom. So what we should see here, Chrome should die. Chrome should be brutally murdered, nope. at least the per user. And then the more genteel enterprise level Chrome should be installed. We haven't actually tested this. <laughs> This will be good. This is, we, we test live. <laughs> See how well this works. If the whiskey comes out, it failed. Fun fact, these are production servers. <laughs> fun fact, these are production Fun fact, yes. <laughs> Chris just piped in. Fun fact, these are production servers. I love it. Oh, yeah. Off-site. All right, so there's the hoop D. Uh, got the uninstall. uninstall. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Now we're moving over here. Notice we did, in fact, see that die. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Um, Nothing up her sleeves. There was no magic there. It's just what mm -hmm. you see here. So, 
And no. what we can, one thing we could do no, while no, I'm no, starting. No, I'm no, there. No, no. Okay. We ask you answer a question. Yeah, sure. Hey, Kelly. Dude, you guys, we love Kelly's voice. You got to read this, man. So that'll be good. Okay. And there's another question. There's another question in the. Um, yeah, in the, chat. In the chat. I might want to direct this one to Chris. But oh, no. is there a way with inventory slash deploy to restart a computer that requires a reboot only if no user is currently logged in? Yes, there is. So you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> Kelly was going to read that. Hey, uh, you I mean, know what, Kelly? I'm sorry. No, you know what? You did it. So much better than I I'm ever used could. to. It. Yeah, we're gonna have Kelly read because you know he can. He's got that sweet. He, oh, he knows yeah. how. <laughs> Good voice. He knows how to read. Audible <laughs> chocolate. Audible <laughs> chocolate. We don't want to deny your audible. Okay, I'm sorry. The next one. The next one's <laughs> yours. Oh, okay. We do okay. have more questions, so it's all good. <laughs> Most professional webcast. Come work here and get ignored. All right. Ignored, ripped on, mm. all that. It's all good. Okay, so the the answer is yes. You're so you're saying you want now. Let me let me modify this. Is there a way with inventory deploy to restart a computer? Um, there is with deploy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, inventory. The answer is yes, but it's going to be going going off of old data. Yeah. Because you you know in inventory we collect the logged on user, um, but that's as of the last scan. Um, more specifically, as of the last scan where the computer info scanner was used. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that could have been a day ago. Um, I mean, if you were going to try and do that, you'd hit that scan immediately and then, you know. I mean, yeah, but should we show real quick? If, if, let's say I'm going to create an in deploy. In deploy, I'm going to say, um, let's go here, uh, create a new package. So reboot. And I, was the question if the computer needs a reboot? No, if, uh, only if a, no user is currently logged on. Oh, okay. okay. So, Nate, better. the first question I have for you is, oh. it's an end user, man. Yeah. Just reboot them. You know, they need it. Oh, Lex, okay. Lex, Lex. What? Reboot. So, this one is <laughs> reboot know. if if uh, no user logged on. I guess it's, it's, it's educational to know how to do this, but seriously, middle of the day, just do it. We have a step called uh, reboot. Mm -hmm. And, of course, with reboot, you can also shut down by clicking that. So, I'm going to delete step one. Now, right. if you're kind, you can leave a message. My favorite is you've got three seconds to try and save your files. <laughs> Go. But so you actually do three seconds. I do. I figured you'd be a zero person. I want it to be All just right. long enough for him to now, see the thing shut down. Here's what you want to do on this. Conditions. Mm -hmm. Go to your conditions. Honestly, recommend turn off your servers. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, chances are you're not going to have someone logged onto the server um, anyway. But if, if you're doing, when you have reboots, a reboot package generally have one for servers and one for workstations yeah. and the servers is you know hey, it's fun to reboot the end users don't yeah. reboot yourself it's not but there's that condition there's another condition mm -hmm. Rob and that is logged on state and we just say only run if no user is logged, is on. logged on so we've got I'm probably will just test this live we've got a user logged on to hoopty right only run if no user is logged on. on. Okay. So we're going to deploy this to Hoopty right now. And you can see Hoopty is in, still in the background as a logged on via a, a remote desktop session. We'll see if Chris does his job while testing. Failed. And you can see this condition's yep. not met. It failed. Mm -hmm. Condition's not met. No steps were able to run. Someone's logged right. on. Didn't reboot. Um, so yes, that hopefully that answers your question. As far as inventory, uh, once again, you're kind of going off of old data, but yes, you could create a collection mm -hmm. that says, you know, computers, uh, computers that have no users logged on, or computers where, where the, the the current user is, is is no one, and reboot those. But once again, if somebody logged on and it hasn't been scanned, you, you could be going off of old data. Yeah. You're more in Lex's row at that point of just upsetting your users. All right, what's the next question? I'll shut up. I believe this one is regarding the uh, the Chrome oh. blast away. Gotcha. Um, does this, the question, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Please. Okay, well, this question is coming to you live from the request it's line. It's the FM voice. And it reads, Dear Shane and Lex, does this work with Chromium 2? Love the show, David C. <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. Hey, okay. I think that was Casey Case. Chris, Chris, <laughs> Chris this, uh, the question was, does this work with Chromium 2? Yeah, that, that one's directed to you, we buddy. <laughs> Will that remove Chromium? And it's 2 T-O-O, -O, uh, not version 2 Chromium. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say probably 
Probably not because we do have, I mean, while, while Google Chrome is built off of the Chromium mm -hmm. project, it is specialized for, for Google. So we're talking about Google Paths. Um, Getting a nod from Chris. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't rewrite it. it. He said you have to modify the script, yeah. um, David. And David, uh, what Chromium are you using, just out of curiosity? If you would like to reply back, I'm keen to know. All right. Um, let's check out how, we, how we've done over here. So coming back over here to uh, our all deployments. So we uninstalled on Hoopty, installed Chrome. Mm -hmm. So now if we go out, we try it. This one, would probably, this one would probably say no because that was the, the, the link the to, the, to the user. So yeah, delete that one. Let's open this guy up. Uh, there we go. And now there was a question that uh, I saw. It um, looks like it's gone through. It was, did, does this retain the bookmarks? Um, I'm going to let Chris handle that one more, but gen generally, generally speaking, I, um, I, I think I saw that it retained the history. Did it retain the history? Yeah. And it, Chris is saying, yes, it does. I, te I tested the history yesterday mm. to see if, if ripping and then putting the new one in, I saw the history and I saw that my history was there. Should I get out of the way and let Chris come explain this? Yeah, let's do that now. You guys, we're going to introduce Chris here. And this, I want to show you guys running these things. Come on, man. I want to show you running these guys um, just so you can see out the gate that, you know, that they work well. There's the uh, uninstall. Where's the, there's the uh, uninstall Firefox. That one we actually haven't run. But uh, sweet, it's okay. We're gonna go through. It. I'm gonna let Chris. Here's your here's your scripts out there, buddy. Oh, fancy. Go ahead and find some, or if you want, actually, we'll do this. Here's how you can find. Here's how you can find the scripts if you download this in the package library. Go to your preferences, open up your repository, and you will see under admin arsenal, uninstall Chrome per user, uninstall per user. All right, there you go. That looks familiar. And you have uh, you have uh, edit edit. Or Notepad++. Plus Plus. Awesome. We love Notepad++. Plus Plus. Okay, so we're just going to do... No, we don't. We're just going to do a quick uh, overview of, of what we're doing here. Can you make... Um, sorry, we, we, sorry, don't, we don't want to maximize that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So make that... Yeah, we do things that. a little different. Oh, okay, okay. I see, I see. <laughs> no, and Chris is flying blind here. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the earpiece hearing J JJ's hot and heavy breathing. I'm not privileged oh. enough to can, hear the voices he, in he, my he head. You can hear this though, right? <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically, what we're doing here, uh, because uh, we're, we're dealing with installations that are per user, that stores it in the the ntuser.dat file, the users uh, registry. What I'm doing is I want to go find out the list of all the profiles on the machine, which is kind of what we're doing here. This is the directory of the user profiles. This is grabbing the profiles. This right here is uh, finding out uh, which are currently loaded into the, the H key users hive, which are any, mach uh, any user that's currently logged on, whether they have a remote shell running, uh, they will have that loaded there. And then we also compare that with the uh, entire list uh, of profiles on the machine so that we can actually get who's not loaded. So mm -hmm. if they're not loaded, we load them. But you obviously want to treat somebody who's logged on differently than somebody who's, who's logged off. Correct. Or at least treat their profile. We treat them all the same. We uninstall Chrome or Firefox. Right. Uh, we, and again, this is me being... Nerd. Me. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a shirt with a corgi coming out of the pocket. Oh, awesome. This is, this, he is the antithesis of Lex. He actually cares about users because he has a corgi coming out of his <laughs> pocket. It's true. This, this, me, this means I care. So He waits till everyone is home before he deploys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and actually here 24-7. <laughs> and that they've been sated from a nice meal. <laughs> That's right. Last rites. <laughs> So, uh, we take the list of uh, un unloaded highs. So, we, the list of profiles we have, we're going to traverse through all of them. If we had previously determined that they were not uh, loaded, we load them. So, we just use the command uh, reg load. Uh, you can do the same thing in a batch file, but we're just using that here in PowerShell since there's not really a good, convenient way to load a, a registry file uh, natively in PowerShell. So, we use reg load here. And the fact of the matter is, folks, start using PowerShell. Microsoft has been saying this for 10 years. Start using PowerShell. Because it's awesome. And look at all the fun stuff it does. So we go through, we traverse uh, the uninstall strings for uh, the users, both 32-bit and 64-bit. Mm -hmm. We'll grab it. If there's Chrome, uh, in this case Firefox, it'll go find them and store them into an array. And then we're just going to go through the array and basically find out, was Firefox there? If so, 
go on and install it. And here's a key part, or a key part about the Firefox. Remember, we were calling it really, really this is a Firefox uninstall, yeah. and that is we can go through. Uh, the profiles say, oh, Firefox is installed in this user Dutch or this user Buzz. And um, we're going to initiate the uninstall sequence with a dash MS, that's the pr probably Mozilla silent, dash MS yep. switch. Um, and that uninstalls it. You can't do that with Chrome. With Chrome, um, you, you, you can do that only with the current user that's logged on running as that user. Yes. If you try to uh, traverse the unloaded registries, and say, okay, this one's installed over here on Dutch. Let's uninstall it. It's it's going to fail because that has to be pro run by Dutch. What this means is actually probably the best way for you to clean up your per users is um, not this script for, for, for Chrome. We can actually have Chris provide that in a blog. Sure. But re really, in a login script or a, a user-level GPO, have a script executed when the users log on that just quickly checks to see if there's Chrome installed for that user and it uninstalls it. Yeah. That is excellent, excellent um, way of doing it because you know, it happens as the user logs on and you don't have to play the timing game, you don't have to play the run as user game. But if you don't want to do the GPO slash uh, login script, then doing this way, the Chrome difference is we don't do the uninstall. Chris has written it so that it just traverses the registry the, the, in, the user, in the user hive, the registry and the files, and finds these Chrome files and just deletes them. Yep. All right? So it's, it's more of a rip, yeah. a tear. A gut punch, if you will. So uh, to continue on here, we actually go grab that, that string that we, uh, Shane just mentioned with the dash ms here. Uh, for all the versions of Firefox, you may have to modify that to uh, different um, switches there. Uh, but after that, it actually goes through and says, hey, call this as that user. And so it starts the process and uninstalls Firefox gracefully, as Shane mentioned. Goes through and removes all traces of it. Desktop shortcut, uh, removes it from the uh, taskbar. Uh, it also removes it from the registry, as well as the app path. Mm -hmm. uh, bonus points, if you actually know what that is. I um, learned yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, if it had previously been one of the unloaded guys, uh, for the registry, it actually goes through and says, okay, let's unload that registry again so that we're not touching it anymore. You never want to leave a registry loaded because uh, if a user comes by later and tries to log in and it tries to load a registry which is already loaded and in use, you're going to end up with corrupted uh, profiles. So don't do that. And that's, that's about okay, it. Cool. So and then it just kind of gives an output, which I think we showed earlier for, look at all the cool stuff it does. Mm -hmm. So, so check, check that out, folks. And um, I, Chris, uh, and maybe I should ask this to, to Annie, because you and, and Annie do this together. But uh, is this going to be your next blog? Are you going to talk about some of these things? I might be. I, would, I, I think we it would could. be nice. Oh. Right, well, I'm going to ask the users that are currently watching, is this something that you guys would like to see as far as the login script part? So that um, it doesn't just do the rip of Chrome. You have a user-level GPO that executes when the user logs in to clean this out gracefully. If so, let us know. If not, then we will have Chris move on to other Corgi-related issues. That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, well, so go ahead. There might be some more yeah, questions for let's you. Let's do one more question, and then we'll is, is this a question? Is this a question for Chris? For whomever. We can have the three of you on it. Squeeze on in here. Sweet. There we go. Join the club. Hold on, hold on. Way up the charts and landed at number three. Dear Shane and Lex, can I deploy to all users and have it uninstalled from all those machines, not knowing if per user is installed or not? Love, Jack B. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to keep that question up there for a moment. Yeah. Number one, you don't deploy to users, you deploy to machines. Yep. I want to make sure that that's clear. Um, so yeah, you can deploy this to, to all your machines. Even if the, so let's put it this way. Let's, we can answer your question thusly, and you can go ahead and remove that. Um, we've got the uninstall Firefox per user. I'm going to deploy this to a machine that I know does not have um, Firefox. In fact, I'm going to actually choose one that has Firefox but it's going to be the machine level version, the regular, the, the, enterprise version. the sanctioned from on high version. And what we should see is the, it, it basically makes no change. It deploys, nothing happens, uh, including uninstalling the good version, the, the appropriate version of Firefox. Okay, internet browsers. And we'll just do uh, Alcone. And in case somebody has that turned off, we'll do Chef and Carla. All right. 
So none of these three should really have that deploy. And we're going to put Chris on the spot because if this fails, he's going to be beaten mercilessly. We'll, we'll punch him down on the ground. We won't see it, but he'll be able to hear it. Going to tear that corgi off your shirt. I'll get a new corgi, a stronger <laughs> corgi, one with magic powers. <laughs> one with magic powers. <laughs> I think I ate a corgi once. <laughs> they cook up nicely. So. <laughs> the other, other, other white meat. The, the other, other, other white meat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, look at this. So an air, an air incurred inside. Sweet. A power shell. So this is. By the way, we're using um, deploy nine, mm -hmm. right? And we handle er er errors in PowerShell a little differently. Boom, boom. And error incurred. Is that what you're expecting to see? It could be. Let's pull it up. That is released now, right? We can uh, it's going to be released today. today. Unless there's a big problem. Oh, yeah. you know what I bet this is? Uh, we, we tested this on uh, newer versions of PowerShell. This probably has PowerShell 2. Okay. And that's actually what's going on here. We can, if you need any help with that, hit, hit us up. I, I, it's an easy workaround. It's just kind of older syntax. So uh, not no a problem. problem. If you look at, at, at Carla, and I, I, I did put down in the uh, description, I'll show you guys that, that this, you, know, you need at least PowerShell version 3. Um, no Firefox found. This is on Carla has PowerShell 3, obviously, or 4. Um, no Firefox found, and it just lists all the different uh, profiles that mm -hmm. were used. So assuming that you have power, now wh where did I put that down, uninstall? If you look in the package properties, um, PowerShell 3.0 is or higher is required. All right. And Chris, I think you tested it against 4.0, but then I ran it against some yeah. machines that had 3. So. Keep that in mind. And we are, we are planning on adding actually the, the PowerShell packages or Windows Management Framework packages to the library so that you can update PowerShell on your target computers. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Do you think we should call it PowerShell or Windows Management Framework on the package? Call it the best package in the library. You're such a zealot. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. You get out of here. Just oh. get, go. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, you guys. Got to love Chris. All you have is a hammer. Everything looks like a damn nail. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Chris. Keep an eye out for his blog, you guys, and thank you very much for, for your questions. Are there, there were no other questions, I guess? So uh, who ended up with a t-shirt and uh, coffee mugs? Oh, Annie will announce that. Oh, okay. That's well, a secret. I'm getting ahead of myself, huh? <laughs> it's a secret. Well, we just don't need to say it twice. That's the <laughs> we're already over time. Hey, once again, if you, if you guys uh, are... You have built packages, you, you, you know packages. We're looking for a good package builder. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a relocation package available. Um, and, you know, good salary, great, great place to work. Amazing benefits, and but you, unfortunately, you have to work with us. Which yeah, and you, but, us but we don't do remote work, so this yeah. require our move uh, to Utah. Yeah. All right. is, is relocation package, is that, is that too confusing? Is that too confusing? Asso associating that with the uh, packager. With, <laughs> no, I don't know. We have a relocation PowerShell script. <laughs> It'll move your. Hey, that'll work. All right, alrighty, guys. Thanks, you guys. We'll see you later. And congratulations, Monica. You are our shirt winner today. I'll send you an email or later on. And for questions, David and Jack, if you'll shoot me an email, I'll get you hooked up with some PDQ swag, choice of coffee mug, whiskey tumbler, or shot glass. We'll see you guys next week.